There are different ways the, the, the disease begin in a patient. The most traditional way, I would say, is that you know, patient is feeling pains. It's uh, you know, and there's the pain is increasing over time. Usually, the patient over a few weeks going to have more and more joint pain, uh, and uh, some patients it start you know very quickly in a few days. Other patients will take months before they see, you know, it can start in one joint and adding in many other joints over time. So there's many different ways, uh, but you, usually, you know, patient will feel, will feel joint pain in many joints, actually, in, let's say, a few weeks of evolution. So, first patient react about the diagnostic. First, it's, it's, it's a shock when they learn that these are suffering from a chronic disease that cannot be cured. So this is their first bad reaction we have. So we have to uh, teach about the disease, what is rheumatoid arthritis, and the consequences of rheumatoid arthritis not being treated. So after that, we propose medication. So we, right away, we tell our patient that we cannot cure you, but we can improve your symptoms. And the goal is to relieve all your pain and give you a normal function and prevent damage. And by doing that, the only way to do that is to start medication. It's true that patients are afraid sometimes about the medication. Not all patients. Uh, because some patients are very angry to start their medication to get improvement, but other patients are afraid. And you know, if there's true there's some side effect. Mo most of the side effects related to medication are, you know, I would say minor side effect for the patient. Uh, the more more serious side effects are rare. Uh, it can happen. It can, you know, I just, you know, I tell my patient this is, you know, their rare side event can occur. But there is more side effect on not being treated compared to take a treatment. And I try to you know, comfort my patient and say, you know, I'm going to see you every two or three months. If you have side effect, you can call my nurse. And we're going to modify the medication, decrease the dose, or change the medication. That's not a problem. You're going to have blood tests. If you, I see something bad in your blood test, I'm going to call you. So you have to be reassuring to the patient. And the patient needs to understand that there is more benefit to take medication than not taking any medication. The most common systemic manifestation is fatigue because of inflammation. This is the most common one, is fatigue. Uh, there is other system, systemic manifestation uh, that can occur, but we don't see them anymore because patients get treated. Uh, one of the systemic manifestations we had before is, was vasculitis, uh, inflammation of small vessels, uh, but this is not occurring anymore because patients are treated because vasculitis is related to disease duration and very high disease activity. So the most common one is fatigue. It's related to inflammation. When we treat inflammation, the fatigue improves. The life expectancy of rheumatoid arthritis was decreased by 5 to 10 percent before we learn how to use the medication we have now. And, we, and there's a lot of data that, you know, scientific data that show that we improve life expectancy in our patient. Uh, and the patient before, you know, biology, we had access to biology, die mainly of cardiovascular events. And now that we have, you know, by controlling the disease, we have good data that we are decreasing the risk of cardiovascular events and cardiovascular mor mortality also. So these, yeah, you know, survival has improved a lot. And it improved in patients who are controlled, the disease, they have disease control. If we don't get disease control, we're not improving survival. Remission is defined uh, for the patient as no joint pain, no pain at all, normal function, no fatigue. 
Uh, for rheumatologists, it's the same, but we had no swollen joint and no tender joint. Uh, this is in clinic. This is what we want in clinic. There is some validated score we can use, uh, let's, such as a SDI, CDI. So this is a score we can give to the patient to you know, determine what is the disease activity score for that patient. Is the patient in remission, low disease activity, moderate disease activity? Uh, the goal is target remission in every patient. And I tell that to my patient. This is the goal. But it's not feasible in all patients. But I tell my patient, if you know, the target is not achievable, at least I will try to put you in very low disease activity. Uh, and for most patients, we are able to do that. Uh, with the options we have available now, right now, it, I would say that most patients in my clinic at least have low disease activity. Uh, the impact is huge, it's fantastic. You know, we had, before the 2000, we had no access to biologic or small molecule, and now we have, you know, more than 15 options available. Uh, and having more options is a good thing because a lot of patients will fail biologic, they will fail the first one, or they will be, get better on, on biologic and they will lose control of the disease what we call secondary failure over time. So we need more options because we are cycling, we are changing biology because, and we don't know why, because over time maybe the immune system adapts and you know, patient escape and uh, we switch to another biology and we are again achieving remission with changing. So more option is good for patient. Uh, we need different mechanisms of action. Uh, this is what Jack inhibitor had brought us in the last few years this new mechanism of action, and uh, it's helped, have been helping a lot with my patient. I would say it's, uh, it's check inhibitor, it's as effective as biologic. Uh, this, we have much less data on safety, long term safety. But the data we have now is look like jack emitter, the safety of jack emitter is very similar to the biologic. It's, it's, it's as effective as biologic, you know, the, the, uh, on achieving remission or controlling the disease is as effective as biologic. But now we have maybe new data for the new jack inhibitor that maybe we're doing it just a little bit better compared to the old biologic with the new jack inhibitor. Uh, but the future will tell us because we have less data. We need also more data on safety because it's very important for the patient. Having more safety issue because we have accumulated 15, 20 years of data on biologic now, especially the TNF inhibitor on, in registry about cancer, risk of infection, cardiovascular events. So we don't have this type of data now for JAK inhibitor, uh, but we're gonna, one day we're going to have all these data available for the patient. believe that you know there's going to be better days and uh, you know the f we are already in the future uh, but there's more future to come uh, there's more development new drugs are coming and we are we learn as rheumatologists to also to use you know these drugs in a better way to optimize what we have available and we're going to have new option in the future that will help us to again optimize more the treatment offered to patient and you know and there's patient who respond very well to this medication but still we have patients who are tr trying biologic they feel better but they're not at their grid they're not in remission so uh, there's new there's research going on new drugs coming and I'm sure in the future we will be able not to cure the disease not yet but at least control most of our patients suffering from rheumatoid arthritis <laughs>